Okay, in this tutorial we're going to show you how to install the DVR server and allocate the drives for recording. Alright, to start you want to make sure you have a 25 gigabyte or higher partition just for C. We recommend an OS partition and a storage partition on your drive or at least separate drives for storage. So we have C and then we also recommend D being your optical drive because when we go into our disk management for our DVR server C and D will both be automatically zeroed out. Cannot record at C and D. Okay so to get started we're gonna go ahead and go to disk management you do this by going to your taskbar go into computer right clicking it and go to manage once you're there you're gonna go ahead and full screen it you'll see disk management on the left go ahead and select that it's gonna load into your windows disk management utility and you're gonna see here you're gonna see your C drive and then the empty space right here on your hard drives. So you're going to go ahead and select uh, the empty space. You'll see when you select it, you'll see the hash marks going across it. Like if you select C over here, you see hash marks. If you select this, you'll see the hash marks. Then go ahead and right click it and go to New Simple Volume. It's going to open up the wizard here. Go ahead and click Next. Um, and it's going to ask you how big of a partition do you want on this unallocated space. Our DVR server has a max of 2.5 terabytes uh, per partition. So if you have a hard drive that's 3 terabytes or a RAID or a JBOD that is uh, 2.5 terabytes or more, you're going to want to partition it into two separate partitions or um, however many 2.5 terabyte partitions you need. Uh, for this sake, or for this case, we are we, ha we are using a one terabyte drive with Windows on 25 gigs, gigs of it, so we're just going to go ahead and max it out. And the max is already filled in for you, so you, you don't need to do anything. Ken's going to assign the following drive letter E. If you don't want E, you can select something else. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep it E. Next, and it's going to give us an NTFS file system. By default, we, all we really do recommend NTFS for all of your drives file systems. Um, you can go ahead and leave the unit size, the allocation unit size at default. The volume label can be whatever you want it to be, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just call it storage. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure performing quick format is checked. Now, this is very important because if you don't have that checked, it will take a long time, depending on the size of your drive, to format. Go ahead and click next. It's going to sum it all up for us, what we just did. And go ahead and click finish. And make sure you leave your disk management window open while you do this. See, and E is complete. Now we're going to do the same thing to F. Bring that to the middle. Next, bigger size because we don't have the operating system partition on there. It's going to assign F to it. NTFS, default. We're going to go ahead and name it storage again so we know what's on there. And quick format is checked. So, And then it sums everything up right here for us. Finish. Okay, again, leave it open while it's formatting. And once it's done, you can go ahead and close out this. And it should have given you two alerts, E and F, right here for each of the drives you created. That's fine. Just go ahead and exit out of them. Okay, now, if you guys bought cards, you should have had a CD to come with the cards, but for whatever reason, you don't have the CD anymore, or the CD anymore, or if uh, you never received a CD, it's a very easy fix. You just go to our website, go to Downloads, and you're going to see our downloads page right here and that's where you can download your software bundle this is a tutorial for the D1 HC uh, line of cards D1 hardware compressed uh, which includes the HC 1, 2, and 3 cards uh, you're going to see our screenshot you're going to see a couple of instruction PDFs on how to install this what we're doing right now the upgraders instructions and then you're going to see the actual bundle download which is right here we're going to download version 6.66 it is n probably not going to stay 6.66 forever, so it might be different when you do this. But just be aware that it might be 6.67 or something higher than that later on. Um, you go ahead and click on it and click Save. And you want to remember where you save it to. I'm going to go ahead and save to Documents. Um, say You would click Save, but I already have one downloaded, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Cancel. 
for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, go ahead and exit out of that, and then you're going to want to go to Documents. That's where we saved it. And it's going to save as a zip file. We're going to go ahead and unzip it. Um, I already have it unzipped, so it's asking me if I want to override the files. So I'll just click Yes to All. Just have it unzip again. It's very important you unzip the bundle before you install. There has been errors before where it just won't install right while it's zipped up. So you want to make sure you unzip it. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and install the drivers. So to install the drivers, you want to click on your Windows Start button again, and you want to go to Computer, and then to Manage. And then instead of going to Disk Management this time, we're going to go ahead and go to Device Manager. Right here on your left again, Device Manager. And you're going to see a couple drivers here. We have a 16-channel HC3 card. Um, that means we should only have two drivers. It's one driver for each eight channels. So you go ahead and right-click it and go to Update Driver Software. Browse my computer for driver software. And then you're going to go ahead and browse to your driver file. Um, we saved it in my documents in the software bundle folder and DVR server and driver and we are running 64-bit windows and we have HC3 cards so we're going to go ahead and select this folder right here and click OK next and it's going to alert you saying that this driver isn't signed you just want to go ahead and click install driver anyway And we are running Windows 7, so this is going to be a little different than Windows XP. Okay, you see it, it did install, but we got a code 37. It just basically means we need to restart the computer after we install the drivers. So hit close. And like I said, since this is Windows 7, it's going to be a little different. If you're Windows XP, you would need to right click and do what we just did for every instance of the uh, DVR driver. But since we're Windows 7, you just go up here to the computer name, ours is DVR server, you right click it and go to scan for hardware changes and it should automatically pick up and install all those drivers for you. There you go. Okay. We're going to head and close out of that. Now we're actually going to install the DVR server. So if you go to your folder, where the DVR server is, go on DVR server and then run the installer. It's going to open up right here, go ahead and click next. You're going to fill in the username and organization with whatever you like, and then you're going to, it's going to ask you where to save it. We, rec we recommend you keep it the default unless you're an advanced user. And you just click Next, Install, and now it's going to go through this process of installation. And right before it's done, it's going to pop up with the window or with the DVR disk management. And we're going to go ahead and work with that and allocate our drives as soon as that comes up. So we got our disk management right here. You go ahead and click on it to bring it to the front. Uh, we could have a few columns here, but we're mostly concerned with the new data package right now. Like I said, we recommend C and D be used for your operating system and for your optical drive. E and F um, was automatically filled in because those are two storage drives that we're using. So our new data package is worth 3,617 data packets for E and 3,715 for F. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, leave E alone right now. What that's going to do is it's going to fill E up with as much data as possible to reserve for recording and the same with F. But since we are using a DVD burner we're going to have to leave F open a little bit for the buffer, so we're going to go ahead and subtract 40 from this number. If you're using just a regular CD-ROM drive or a Blu-ray, the number will be different. I believe CD-ROM is 10, Blu-ray is on is 100, but since we're using DVD burner, we're going to be using we're going to be subtracting 7. So this will be 3,675. Go ahead and click it and type it in there. Um, and and that 
buffer needs to be on your last letter drive. Notice how we have E and then F. F is the last letter. If we were to have E, F, and G, we would be doing this to G. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and hit Create Package. And what this does is this allocates um, your drives for recording. It writes files to your hard drives to reserve for recording, so recording doesn't record over certain system files or your files. Um, and we do recommend all your drives be NTFS because this will take a lot longer if it was on FAT32. We're going to let this thing uh, go ahead and allocate our drives. I'm going to go ahead and explain this table while it's allocating. Um, you're going to see the total size in megabytes here on the left in your first column for C, E, and F right here. The total free space in megabytes right here. Um, and then the allotted data package. Uh, it's at zero right now because technically we haven't reserved anything for recording yet. It's being reserved right now. Uh, the residual data package is just the maximum of what you can make your drives record to. It's a little bit more than the new data package because the DVR server likes to fill it up as much as possible without getting Windows errors saying that your drive is full you need to clean it out. Um, and your new data package is what you want to reserve for recording. So you would go ahead and using these tables figure how much you would want for recording. Uh, the packages are worth 256 megabytes so essentially 3620 times 256 would be that number right there in megabytes. I believe is 928,866 megabytes. Let it finish recording. It will prompt you when it's done. Now that it's done, it's going to prompt you that it's done. The index and data package has been created successfully. So go ahead and click OK. And you're going to go ahead and see the new data package is all zeroed out, uh, except for 40. And that is our DVD buffer. We don't want to allocate the, the 40 packages worth of space. Go ahead and click Exit. And it should be done right now. Um, if you go ahead and if you go to Computer, you're going to go ahead and see that Windows tells you that this is filled up. It really isn't. It's just allocated for recording. Um, and we have the 10 gigabytes free right here for your DVD burner. If it was Blu-ray, it would be a lot more. If it was CD-ROM, it would be a little less. But that is what you need. And this is the tutorial. So if you have any questions, go ahead and visit our website email us at support at eDigitalDeals or call us at 877-DEALS-79 and dial 2 for support. Okay, 